Tonight on Wife Swap, two women worlds apart. A no-nonsense fire chief mom and a conservative stay-at-home mom. Do you cook? Oh, I definitely cook. Yes. Fresh meals, fresh food. What? Let's get right to the point. Do yeah. you cook? No. Did you see the difference in that response? One family was super happy, and one family was not. I want you to keep in mind, though, that obviously the traditional family is going to be unhappy moving from a person who cooks to a person who doesn't, but as we can see, despite not having access to one, the modern family values a person who can cook as well. Actually, the dad Jason specifically said that he hoped his wife was swapped with someone who cooks. What would I like the new wife to be able to do? Definitely, if she can cook, that's a plus. Huh. Who would have thought? These clips come from a show called Wife Swap, and this episode was filmed in 2018. Two wives are selected to swap families for one week. Neither of them knows who they're swapping with or where they're going until they are on the show. All they get before they see their new family is a look at the house and a tablet from the other wife that gives them a description of the family and the house rules. Let's get into it, but first, allow me to tell you about today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Yes, they got me too. Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play game that is on the cutting edge of mobile gaming. It's almost like having a AAA quality game right in your pocket. Collect 500 champions, each with their own skill trees, and millions of artifacts to find and equip. What I like about Raid is the professional voice acting, epic stories, stunning graphics, and the massive amount of character customization that allows you to create the perfect team of champions. Not to mention, Raid just released their biggest update ever, Doom Tower. In Doom Tower, you'll face 120 floors, you'll find a bunch of secret challenge rooms, and, most importantly, you'll have 12 new bosses to take down. There's never been a better time to start playing, and here's the best part. The Raid team is giving away a bunch of new free goodies, plus a super special champion to help everyone get started in the tower. If you want to get a massive head start in Raid, all you have to do is click on the link in the description. New players will get their free Void Champion, an XP booster, some energy refills, 50 gems, and even an Ancient Shard right when they get in the game. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. But sign up now because these bonuses are only available to new players for the next 30 days. Alright, let's get back into it. One of the major things that has been taken away from us culturally through various propaganda outlets is the ability to be desirable to other people. People have all of these toxic relationships and toxic friendships because they are only focused on what they are getting out of the relationship rather than being the type of person who someone would want to have in their life. They are missing half of the equation, and that actually has a negative effect on their psychology. The reality is that it feels kind of good to help people or do things for them, especially when they are doing something for you. Personally, I think that reciprocity is a biological impulse. Relationships where each person isn't giving back to the other person tend to toxify and fail. We are made to feel bad when we aren't returning favors, and we are made to feel bad when we aren't paying it forward by initiating favors. At the very least, people who aren't willing to pay it forward or reciprocate tend to be unhappy people. For example, during the first part of the week, the modern woman, Halani, has to follow the house rules of her new traditional husband, who now provides for her. Here is her response to those rules. Jack expects Halani to make his 30 workout meals for the week. There's no way I should be cooking for five hours for some man that is fully capable of doing it himself. What an extremely selfish statement. That's her role in this household. She doesn't go to work in this new family, so she is basically saying that she wants to sit around all day while her husband works. Here's a little secret. It's not about whether her new husband Jack can cook for himself or not. It's about pulling your weight in the relationship. In Jack's house, he works to pay the bills, and his wife takes care of the home. Imagine if he said that there was no way he was going to pay for the food, the rent, and the utilities because his wife has two hands and two legs, 
and she can do it herself. Ask yourself, if he can do everything for himself, what does he need you for? You just ruined the purpose of the relationship. It's the worst of both worlds. There's nothing you are willing to provide for him because he can do it himself, and there's nothing he can provide to you because you are so strong and independent. I guess the only thing in that situation that ties you two together is the kids. Uh, people who design their relationships like this, don't be surprised when you hate each other after the honeymoon phase is over. Just for contrast, listen to how the traditional wife, Misty, handles a situation like this. I apologize because the only example of this I have is at the end of the show, so forgive me for jumping around. After each family has had a week with a new wife, they talk about their experiences with each other. One of Jack's rules is that his wife Misty has to wear makeup at home. In this scene, Halani asks her why. The makeup? I did not like it. Why do you do that? Why do you wake up and get yourself so together? Um, I mean, I know he likes it. Because he likes it. That's all it takes. You may have different preferences about makeup, but in their house, Jack likes it when his wife wears makeup, so she wears it. That's called a relationship. As I said, this willingness to provide versus not wanting to provide has an effect on their behavior. Halani, the modern woman, is mostly negative during this show, while the traditional housewife, Misty, is mostly positive. This starts right as the experiment begins. Each wife gets to see each other's house before they meet the new family. Listen to what Misty has to say about Halani's house. Before they meet their new families, Halani and Misty have a chance to look around their new homes. I feel like I'm in a hotel or something. <laughs> the home is beautiful. Everything is very positive. Let's see Halani's review of Misty's house. It's very small. I only see one bathroom. This is shocking, actually. It's really, really tiny. I'm not going to be comfortable here. Everything is very negative. It's too small. I know they can't hear you say this, but Halani, Miss Fire Chief, who is the powerful leader, is that how you introduce yourself to new people? Your first impulse was to think negative things about them. How is that supposed to foster a good relationship? I mean, it might not be as big as your house, but this place is still really nice. You could definitely do worse. And it doesn't stop there. After they look at their new home, each wife reads a letter written by the other wife that talks about the family and states the rules of the house. Each of them describes their husbands. Here's Halani's description of her husband. Each wife has written a manual as a guide to the running of their homes. I call Jason my third child. Your third child. Wow, you really respect and appreciate your husband a lot. Read this. They actually took a good enough camera angle to show what Halani wrote. It sounds like she's trying to compliment him for being free-spirited, but ends up insulting him in the process. Then, she does insult him in the next paragraph. Halani, this is a sales pitch. You are supposed to make your family look good and get the other wife excited to live with them. Do you think Misty wants to spend a week with an adult child? So the first thing you do is insult the house of the family that you have to spend a week with, and then you insult your own family and make them look bad. Anyway, let's hear Misty's description of her husband. We have very traditional roles, and I believe that as a wife, I should support my husband as the head of our household. What? That's kind of a neutral statement, but it shows that she respects her husband because she is willing to work for him. Also, earlier in the episode, she said that it's her dream to be a housewife, and he provides that for her, so this is her way of returning the favor. Now, admittedly, if you were to watch this episode, you'll see that Misty doesn't only say positive things about Jack, and Jack certainly has his own issues. But at least, Misty shows that she appreciates him in her letter and says that she puts his needs before hers. Yes, that's called the good relationship. Both of them should be doing that for each other. In any relationship, you are supposed to think about the needs of the other person. Look at it this way. Each of them fills a role that the other cannot provide. Jack makes his money through marketing, and Misty can't do that, so she needs him. Jack can't cook or do all the daily planning, so he needs her. 
Though it's not said in the show, you can tell that Jack appreciates that part of his wife because he is really mad when Halani doesn't want to cook. Even Halani's husband Jason is unhappy that she doesn't cook. You look in the refrigerator, I have pre-made food. It's the same thing every day because my wife does not cook. These things aren't trivial like feminism wants you to believe. Eating the same dull food every day because no one can cook is like torture. Also, think about how many family events and parties are centered around food. If no one in the house can cook, then you just destroyed a major motivator for those events. Now, you could center events around something else, but since food is such an easy motivator, it's unlikely that families like Halani's family will be able to think of something comparable. So in reality, they just end up not spending time together, and that's well pointed out in the show. You can't simply make money and call it a day. You actually have to do stuff together to keep your team functioning. But maybe the point of modern feminism is to get rid of that. It doesn't matter how much money you bring in if the group you bring it back to functions poorly. Yeah, I make $200,000 a year, but my kids are fat and unhealthy because they always eat out. Also, I'm never home, so we never spend any time with each other, and my kids don't know any basic skills or how to survive without my help. Look at that dust. Oh, I feel really sad all of a sudden. They don't ever use a family dining table. They have an expensive dining room table that no one uses. That's great for status. You can brag all about how many nice things you have as your home life falls apart. In this situation, neither parent has the time or the energy to take care of the important household demands because both of them are out working all day. Meanwhile, they have other people raising their kids like their soccer coach so their kids don't end up respecting them. It would be much better for the family if they moved to a less expensive house so one of them could stay home. Oh, and actually, let's get to the cooking because I do want to talk about the cooking. I was appalled at the scene where Halani cooks for her new family. Take a look at this picture. There are several things wrong with it. One, she is using a blade on a granite countertop. That's a great way to dull the knife and make cutting food more dangerous. Two, she's holding the food improperly. Her fingers are sticking out, and that's a great way to cut yourself or chop them off. Chef Ramsay, please show us how you're supposed to hold the food. One finger in front, two behind. This knuckle protects the nail and slice. Last but not least, she is using the wrong knife. Her biggest complaint was about how long it takes to cook stuff. Well, using a chef's knife or a santoku knife would be far more efficient. After a month or two of practice, you can chop a handful of vegetables in seconds with the right knife and the right grip. Whereas if you use a steak knife, it can take up to a minute or two or longer per vegetable. If you have to cut up 10 different vegetables to make a meal for your family, Think of how much time you're wasting two to three times a day by not using the proper technique. That's why it takes five hours to cook for Jack. To be fair, though, surprisingly, the traditional housewife, Misty, also uses the wrong technique. And it's not like this was filmed decades ago. They filmed this in 2018. You guys, you have the internet. Gordon Ramsay has tons of videos online that teach people how to do this stuff. Over the years, that's going to translate to days and weeks of lost time because you didn't want to spend a few minutes watching a YouTube video on how to do things properly. If you want success, you have to be efficient with your time. You need to be constantly searching for and using the most effective techniques to get the job done in the least amount of time. That's a major difference between people who do well and people who don't. Okay, that's enough about cooking technique. The second part of this show is about leadership. Halani, the fire chief, gets destroyed by Misty, the housewife, when it came to leadership and creating a cohesive group. In order to be called a good leader, you need to be able to guide a group effectively to achieve a goal. With that said, let's listen to Halani's philosophy on leadership. Sometimes you do have to let them know you mean business. Listen, you're not in charge here. You will do what you're told to do. That is a terrible philosophy on leadership. Clearly, Halani cares more about the status of being a leader than she does about upholding the responsibility that a leader is supposed to uphold. Here's what I mean. Who made eggs because there's eggs all over the stove? Get the dishes out of the sink. Why is the milk still out? 
I want this room spick and span to my standards. If everybody does their part, then we don't have to keep having these conversations every single time I come home. Let's ask a simple question. Is Halani getting what she wants out of the kids? She pesters the kids by saying, I keep having to say this. Well, if you've told them a bunch of times and they aren't listening, the problem is not them. You are the leader. If your team doesn't listen to you, the problem is you. Leaders don't get status because they boss people around. Leaders get status because they can organize a group to accomplish a mission. Organizing a group, keeping people from fighting, and making sure that everyone is giving their all is an extremely difficult task. Most people can't do it. That's why good leaders are revered. But as I said, Halani cares more about the fact that she is the youngest fire battalion chief who handles all the dangerous jobs. I can do a lot of things the average man cannot do. Of course you can do that. If you can run a seven minute mile, you are better than the average man. The real question is, can you outdo the men in your field? Another real question is, what do her followers think of her? My mom thinks that she can just boss everybody around because she does that at work. I know your room is a mess. <laughs> My dad is more fun. If you are a good leader, your followers shouldn't hate you. They should like and respect you. Ask yourself, who did the son Kingston say bad things about and who did he say good things about? The one he said good things about is the one he respects. Kingston also said he values fun, so if you were going to lead him into being responsible, you have to do it in a fun way. Halani is not getting desirable behavior out of her kids, so clearly she is ineffective at leading them. However, unlike Halani, Misty, the stay-at-home mom, is actually a good leader. Ironic, right? The high-powered career woman is outdone by the housewife who she called a doormat. Misty's a doormat and she just lets her husband Jack do whatever. Here is how Misty handles the kids with baking a cake. Y'all never baked a cake? No, but I watch shows on it. <gasps> well, watching a show and doing it is two different things. Yeah. I've never yeah. ever yeah. baked a cake. Baking is really bonding for a family. I mean, you can't have a phone in your hand and be baking at the same time. And plus, you get to eat cake. There you go. And this, just break them up. This looks so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. She doesn't yell or pester them for not knowing how to cook. She instead is playful, and the kids enjoy it. Also, she picked a food item that is sugary that most kids would like, so they would actually be willing to cook it. And most importantly, with Kingston, she gave him a job that is at his skill level. She didn't have him make the entire cake, he just made the frosting. That ensures that the task is not too difficult for him to learn, and it also requires that he and his sister, who made the batter, have to work as a team. Excellent design. It may just look like she is baking a cake, but the way Misty has set things up is really complex. Also, understand that if you have to work a job, you don't have time to think of creative ways to accomplish activities like this. So what it becomes in Halani's world is her just screaming at the kids to make a cake, and then it doesn't get done. In Misty's case, when you have extra time at home because you aren't working, you can instead design a lesson plan that gets the kids interested in the project. Misty is so effective at catching people's interests that she even has Jason doing things he normally wouldn't do. Surprisingly, even Jason comes downstairs to join the family. I couldn't believe that my dad was just sitting there without his phone or anything. He was just watching us, supervising us. He was having a good time with us. The pace of the home is actually, it's a little different right now. Like I say, it's a little slower pace. It's cool to just kind of settle down and do stuff together. Jason typically doesn't cook, but Misty gets him to make the entire dinner, which was Mexican food. The kids made the dessert. Then, Misty invited Halani and Jason's parents over so they could all have a family dinner and get to know each other better. If you want to be all corporate about this, you would call this a team-building experience. You have to do this if you want a team to work well together and grow to like each other. Needless to say, Misty and Jason's relationship ends positively. Me and Misty, we kind of got like a a playful friendship. Misty and Jason worked so well together that I honestly think they would do better marrying each other instead of being with their respective partners. Jack and Halani, however, worked terribly. That's not entirely Halani's fault. Jack is a little overbearing. Firefighters, they're always sitting around playing cards, doing nothing. Okay, they just met and one of the first things he does is crap on her career. 
bad idea. That sets a negative tone for the relationship. Now there was definitely some editing here and that may have just been how it was cut, but there are other examples that weren't cut where Jack does pretty much the same thing. That being said, Halani's behavior isn't any better. For the first part of the week, the wives have to follow the house rules and for the second part of the week, they get to create their own rules. This allows for a little give and take. However, Halani does a wonderful job leading in by refusing to follow the house rules. Did you read the manual when you came? In regards to what? Makeup. You don't think I'm together? I have on a nice outfit, my hair is combed. Well, where's the makeup? We're going by the old rules. Why don't you make up? I don't need to. I look great as I am. And but guess you... what? My husband loves me like this. How do you expect Jack to follow your rules if you don't follow his? Personally, I agree with her. She looks fine and Jack's makeup role is dumb. However, if you expect him to listen to you and you don't listen to him, you are setting a bad example. People follow modeled behavior. They don't care about words. As I said, Halani just wants the status of being a leader and is not actually a good leader. Most of her changes during her part of the week were just ways to get back at Jack. For example, Halani is mad that Jack made her wear makeup so she says that he has to wear makeup while he cooks food for the family. Let's not forget, you're gonna do the cleaning and the cooking with a full face of makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. Jack. Mm-hmm? Got your makeup on? What makeup? Come on. I'm not putting on makeup. I'll put it on for you. No. He hit it. I know he did. I am not wearing makeup. Okay, don't wear it. Okay. For somebody with Jack's personality, this is a highly unrealistic goal. As a leader, you have to know your team's limitations. This is like if Misty expected nine-year-old Kingston to cook the entire dinner instead of just making the frosting for the cake. Then, Halani becomes extremely petty and insists that she watch over Jack's every move while he cooks because that's what he did to her. Halani, instead of acting like a child and trying to get back at your teammate, how about you show him the error of his ways by being amazing? If you wanted to have Jack spend a day in his wife's shoes, all you had to do was assign him the same activities and offer to help out. Jack isn't enthusiastic about cooking? Okay, how about instead of staring at him like a micromanaging tyrant, you offer to cook with him? Staring at him provides no labor, whereas cooking with him puts the task at his skill level while it also gets them to work together, which builds their relationship. But she doesn't do that. Instead, her behavior blows up in her face, and Jack walks off the show. Honestly, is she this petty when she's at work? After the cooking event, the relationship becomes so toxic that Halani leaves early. I'm in a hotel room this morning. I slept like a baby, by the way. But I felt the need to remove myself from... Um, that moon residence last night. Jack is a live wire. I just did not want to stay there with him. Is that how the big bad fire chief behaves? She just quits when things get hard? Wow, I would love to work under her. Like I said, Jack has his problems, but that doesn't mean he's impossible to work with. If Halani was a good leader, she could have created a relationship that was just as positive as Missy's relationship with Jason. Now, of course, Halani isn't some cartoon villain where everything about her is bad, and I always like to give credit where credit is due. At the end of the show, the two couples sit down and talk about the experience. During this discussion, Halani gives a good suggestion. Jack and Misty have this rule where their kids have to knock every time they want to leave their rooms. Jack and Misty's house is small, and the knocking allows them adult time and privacy. The problem with that rule is that it turns their kids into prisoners. Here is Halani's suggestion to fix that problem. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, I do want to mention this to you, the kids having to ask for permission to come out of their rooms at night, I was like, what about putting a TV in your bedroom? Or you guys leave the house and go out on a date. Yeah. 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 You know, I would love that. And that's the show. Now I want to end this off with a very powerful thing that a friend of mine showed me about a decade ago. When there are problems with leadership, a lot of people think, well, either I win and you lose, or I lose and you win. Or it's like how it was on the show. It's either Jack gets his way or Halani gets her way. Someone always has to lose. That's not really how good solutions are formed. 
when you are doing things correctly, everyone should win. So a long time ago, this friend of mine showed me a scene from the first Spider-Man movie where Spider-Man and the Green Goblin are on top of a bridge. The Green Goblin is going to throw a group of kids and Mary Jane off the bridge at the same time, and he tells Spider-Man to choose. Are you going to let a bunch of kids die, or are you going to let the girl of your dreams die? Let die the woman you love, or suffer the little children. Now choose! This is one of my favorite scenes out of any movie because Peter Parker was given two bad options and he said, no, I don't accept those terms. He instead finds a way to save both that the Green Goblin didn't anticipate. Since watching that, I have always thought if you are stuck with only bad options, you aren't thinking hard enough. There is always a more intelligent way to solve a problem if you put your mind to it. If Halani got out of this black and white dichotomy, thinking that either she wins or Jack wins, she would have realized that there are other answers to her problem. And this is true with everything. You should always be looking for the shades of gray. But those solutions will only be available to you if you keep your mind open to it. When your mind is open, you'll start to notice a lot of things you never saw before. That's how you come up with complex and intelligent solutions to problems. You think outside the box. But with that said, I think that's enough for this video. So if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, comment and share. If you would like to support this channel, then you can do so with PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar. You can find all of those links in the description. Last, if you haven't checked me out on BitChute or Minds.com, you can also find those links in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.